our recent paper, Climate Effects on Archaic Human Habitats and Species Successions, emerged from a collaboration with climate scientists, paleoecologists and anthropologists from South Korea, Italy, Switzerland and Germany. This 30-minute overview presentation provides more background on our main findings, the applied methods and the overarching research questions. Let us take a look at our family tree extending back in time about 7 million years. There were prominent evolutionary failures, such as the genera Adipithecus, Australopithecus and Paranthropus. Around 3 million years ago, our genius, Homo, emerged in the savannas of eastern Africa and as the climate cooled and pronounced ice age cycles developed, we see a diversification into famous species such as Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo neanderthalensis and us, Homo sapiens, the only survivor on this tree. In our new study, we ask three fundamental questions. Number one, which climate conditions did early human species prefer? Number two, which role did climate play in human speciation? And number three, who were the direct ancestors of Homo sapiens? First, let's ask an even more basic question. How could past climate changes have influenced human behavior, migration, adaptation and evolution? The most prominent mechanism is the following. The Earth revolves around the Sun on an ellipse, but the shape of the ellipse, called eccentricity, changes over time with periods of 100,000 and 400,000 years. Moreover, the Earth's axis does not only change its tilt slightly, known as obliquity, but it also wobbles with a period of 20,000 years. This celestial clockwork determines how much solar radiation every place on our planet receives at any given latitude and time. It creates ice ages and shifts the large-scale tropical rain bands on our planet, causing alternating wet-dry conditions. This wet-dry and warm-cold pendulum determines where to find food which in turn is linked to human survival. It also controls their adaptation to environmental stress and may trigger migrations as I demonstrated in a previous Nature paper in 2016. To study climate human linkages, we first need to compile basic information on who, which species, lived where and when, and what climate conditions they experienced. In our study, we are for the first time tethering data on human evolutionary history to climatic information. How do we do this? First, we need a data set on early human fossils and archaeological specimens. Our colleague, Professor Pasquale Raya from the University of Naples in Italy, developed for our article the most comprehensive compilation of such data which includes 3,200 data points covering Africa, Europe and Asia and extending back 2 million years in human history. The compilation includes information on the human species, longitude and latitude and age. In other words, the who, where and when. It is not easy to find reliable reconstructions of past climate changes from the locations where archaic humans lived. Instead, our team used the ICCP IBS supercomputer Aleph, one of the fastest supercomputers in South Korea, to simulate how the global climate system has responded to past changes in Earth's orbital configuration, atmospheric greenhouse gases, and the waxing and waning of the Northern Hemisphere ice sheets. The Aleph computer model simulation, which covers Earth's history of the last three million years and overlaps with the human evolutionary history of Homo sapiens, Homo neanderthalensis, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo erectus, and other archaic African Homo species, 
was conducted by Dr. Kyung Suk Yoon from our center, the IBS Center for Climate Physics in Busan, South Korea. It is the longest climate model simulation ever conducted. It turns out that the computer data agree extremely well with existing paleoclimate reconstructions from ice cores, ocean and lake sediment cores and cave records. In our next step, we extracted from our simulation temperature, rainfall and vegetation conditions, which correspond to the ages and locations of archaic humans in the fossil and archaeological record. From this, we can derive statistically a climate niche model which computes the probability that a particular human species, say Homo heidelbergensis, was present at a given time and location in the geological past. These so-called habitats are shown here in blue for the major five species under consideration. Our analysis demonstrates that Averaged over time, Homo sapiens and Homo erectus had the most extensive habitats, consistent with the idea of them being generalists. Early African Homo groups two to one million years ago had very narrow climate niches in eastern and southern Africa, whereas the Neanderthal habitat was largely centered in Europe. Homo heidelbergensis, a group that lasted from about 800,000 years ago to 160,000 years ago, lived in southern Africa, along the Rift Valley in eastern Africa and in Eurasia. We will come back to this species later. What is unique about our analysis is that we can also calculate the time evolution of these human habitats over the past two million years. We just show here the results for four different sites of anthropological interests, but the simulation data are far more extensive than that. We can see immediately that A, the habitat suitability was different for each of the species and at every point. B, that habitat suitability fluctuated on timescales of 20,000 to 100,000 years, which in fact corresponds to the astronomical forcings that we discussed earlier on, namely the precessional and eccentricity cycles respectively. The celestial astronomical clockwork therefore determines where and when different human species lived. Let's move now to the question of the origin of Homo sapiens. The earliest fossil skull which shares the most common features with anatomically modern humans is from Herto in Ethiopia and it is about 170,000 years old. Another well-preserved skull from Florisbad in southern Africa from 260,000 years ago reveals characteristics of both Homo sapiens and Homo heidelbergensis and the Broken Hill skull has been clearly identified as a 300 to 400,000 year old Homo heidelbergensis. We therefore propose that a transition or speciation event may have taken place in southern Africa between 300,000 and 200,000 years ago from Homo heidelbergensis into Homo sapiens. If this hypothesis was true, the habitats of Homo heidelbergensis and Homo sapiens must have overlapped during this time in southern Africa which is exactly what our archaic human habitat model simulations show. Further analysis of these habitat overlaps allowed us to identify the regions where one species gradually developed into another. We identified two major such transitions. The transition of the European group of Homo heidelbergensis into Neanderthals around 400,000 years ago, and the already mentioned speciation of African heidelbergensis into Homo sapiens between 300 to 200,000 years ago. Both transitions were likely facilitated by massive astronomically generated climate anomalies, which occurred during these times and which may have caused genetic bottlenecks and subsequent genetic drift and speciation. 
Our study demonstrates that Homo heidelbergensis was an important archaic human lineage which played a central role in the development of late Pleistocene human species, including our own. When we further combine this information with previously published genetic data, the following scenario emerges. At a time when the major Ice Age cycles began, Heidelbergensis split into an African and a Eurasian branch around 680,000 years ago. The Eurasian branch further split into Denisovans, a human species known mostly from its genetic fingerprint, and Neanderthals. The southern African branch eventually became us around 300,000 years ago. We further migrated and diversified inside and outside Africa, eventually with several out of Africa dispersals around 100,000 years ago and 55,000 years ago, non-African humans further interbred with Neanderthals and Denisovans in Europe and many of us still carry this genetic legacy in us today. Let us now come back to the question of how humans adapted to their climatic environment. In this figure you can see that early African humans between 2 to 1 million years ago preferred very stable habitats with a limited range of net primary production, a measure of vegetation growth and food availability. With the emergence of Homo heidelbergensis, this picture changed dramatically. Through its extensive migration into Eurasia, this wandering group adapted to new environments including very dry and cold conditions. This was further enabled through an increase in brain size, more sophisticated stone tools and the ability to control fire. Neanderthals with the largest brain size were still habitat specialists as compared to Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens, due to their adaptive capability and social skills, were able to live in the harsh, harshest climatic conditions, likely outcompeting other human species. Let me highlight the three major take home messages. By combining climate supercomputer modeling with archaeological and anthropological data, we find in our study that past climate shifts induced by changes in Earth's axis and orbit influenced where archaic human species lived. Major speciation events correlated with shifts in climate. Our habitat Overlap analysis supports the idea that African Homo heidelbergensis was the likely ancestor to early Homo sapiens. Thank you for your attention.